So when you're starting out as a young player, it's really easy to want to learn a bunch of licks and play really fast and, and, and try to be like the big dogs, you know. But actually what I've learned from, from the big dogs is, you know, myself included, when I first started out, I was trying to play fast, you know. I was trying to, you know, catch up to everybody and try to impress everybody. And there was a couple of guys that were older than me and certainly a lot more seasoned that I used to go – hear play and I thought God, every time I hear these guys they sound great and then the more I played and the more um, experience I got I started realizing that these guys weren't particularly technically perhaps all that good but they always sounded so great and I started really thinking about that so I you know I'm woodshedding I'm in room practicing again trying to learn all this fast stuff and I'd go to a, a gig and you know nobody was saying too too much you know and and as I started looking into it more, I started realizing what these guys had that I hadn't learned yet. And that was the four T's of playing guitar, the letter T, the four T's of playing guitar. Uh, the very first one is tone. Make sure you've got that tone dialed in. Now, out of these four T's, there's going to be a couple of things that are, you know, subjective and, and to each his own or whatever. But I'm telling you, we all know what a bad tone sounds like. And when you're playing and people are kind of looking at you or they're not complimenting you're playing nine times out of 10, it's your tone. Um, your tone can really, sometimes people in the crowd don't know what they're hearing, but if it's a bad tone, they're not necessarily going to come up and say, man, you play great, you know, cause they just got to be pleasing to their ears. So lock into that tone, really make sure you, you hone into that tone. Everything's good and balanced. Um, if you play, like this is an Anderson with two pickups, but if you play a strap with three pickups, just make sure everything's good and balanced and, you know, one thing's not standing out more so over the other. Um, I'm, I could go on and on and on and so could you all about tone, but really we all know a good tone from bad tone, so make sure you got that locked that, lock that in because out of the other three T's that I'm about to bring up, tone is probably the most important. If you have a great tone, people are going to want to listen to you all night and you're going to be fun to play with. So in order this tuning, uh, y'all gotta, you know, make sure your stuff's in tune, any instrument really, but on guitar, since we're talking about guitars here, uh, get that tone locked in, get that tuning dialed in. There's nothing worse than a four or five hour gig with a guitar player that's out of tune. It's, it's rough on the vocals. If you got a steel player or a, or a fiddle player that doesn't have frets, it's brutal for them. Uh, tune that guitar. Tuner's cheap. You can get them anywhere. Y'all know that. Just get you one, make sure it's working good. Uh, and make sure that that guitar is in tune. Timing. Timing is another biggie. Uh, and I got to be honest with you, I've been playing a long, long time. And from time to time, I'll get lazy. Um, and I'll maybe drink a little bit too much Red Bull or too much coffee. And my timing, you know, can, I can sometimes jump a little ahead uh, on, a, on a song. You know, I, I catch it and I fix it. But I'm still guilty of that myself. You know, I, I, I catch myself. Uh, you know, not necessarily drag, but sometimes I'll rush a little bit, you know, but you know, I catch it and I hone it in, but that's a big one too. Make sure your timing is on. Um, and if I start doing a lot of gigs back to back, I get, you know, a little, um, I don't know, maybe lazy is not the right word, but maybe a little bit of burnout and maybe not really paying a 100% attention to it. So a lot of times what I'll do is, uh, just sit with a metronome for like 50 minutes a day. Uh, just just play whatever. It doesn't even matter what you play. Just play along with a metronome and you'll hear whether you're dragging, whether you're rushing or you're, whether you're not even close at all. And when you're first starting out, uh, don't let it discourage you because when I first started out, I had a little portable metronome that I used to uh, hook on my on my guitar strap and I'd wander around these hotel rooms and I played a lot of clubs when I was a kid and I would just have that thing hooked to my guitar strap and I would just play anything, uh, whether it be scales or just any, I'd sing along and play along to a solo just by myself walking around the room. I'd sometimes walk up and down a hallway in these old hotels, you know, just to, to, you know, that's all people heard, you know, like what's going on up there. But it really, really helped me a lot in my young days. And, and I still do it. Uh, be a tasty player, you know, uh, again, getting back to what I first started talking about when we're young, we want to jam a million notes into a little bit of, into a little bitty area. Uh, make sure you're tasteful. Uh, my dad was really big on, uh, helping me recognize a great melody. Uh, just a prime example of Silver Wings, an Old Merle Haggard song. 
Uh, that was one of the songs where um, it was easy to put a lot of notes in, there's a lot of room in it. But my dad said, you know, that melody is beautiful. And don't worry about that the singer just sang a verse in the chorus of that melody because once it transposes to an instrument, it's going to sound different to the listener's ear. Uh, it doesn't So it doesn't matter what instrument it is. We're talking about guitar, but it can be any instrument. But the melody is going to transpose differently <clears throat> to the listener's ear from when a singer sings that melody and from when a player plays that melody. And a lot of times that's all you need to do is the melody. If you want to embellish a little bit, sure. Who doesn't? We're soulless. But sometimes a melody is really all you need to play. If it's a really beautiful melody, you know, somewhere with a rainbow, that's a prime example. Um, you can play that just note for note for the melody and, you know, people will love it. So, yeah, uh, let's recap, if we will. <clears throat> tone. Make sure you got that tone locked in. Uh, and you'll find it. You'll you'll get the right pedals. you get the right chords. you get the right amps. You do all that stuff. You know, I play an Anderson, but also play a Telecaster. I play a Stratocaster. But each of those guitars, I've really spent a lot of time making sure they're dialed in, make sure they're they're good and smooth. Um, tuning. I'm, I'm big on tuning. I, nothing... Out of the four T's, nothing drives me more crazy than me being out of tune or uh, sometimes I get a set of strings that has a bum string in it, like a B string a lot of times, it'll be flat um, tone wise and then it you know just won't stay in tune, so I'll change those strings out. But yeah, get that tone locked in, <clears throat> excuse me, get that tuning locked in, get that timing locked in and work on that taste and you will get to the next level before anyone else, I promise you.